Good afternoon and uh, welcome back to the fourth and last day of Dhaka Media Summit, actually the last academic sections of this edition of Dhaka Media Summit. We are uh, going to have a very important issue in our discussion, a research panel on identification, digital audience and media trust in Bangladesh as the last session of 2022 edition of Dhaka Media Summit. As you know, the conference is jointly organized by the Media Studies and Journalism Department, University of Liberal Arts Bangladesh and International Association for Media and Communication Research, IAMCR Bangladesh. The central theme of the conference this year is future of journalism. Our associate partners are LSPR Communication and Business Institute, Jakarta, Indonesia, Sukhothai Thamathirat Open University, Thailand, Walisongo State Islamic University, Indonesia, Medium College, the Philippines, Kaja Moinuddin Cheste Language University, India, Pelita Harapan University, Indonesia, Media Action Nepal, Digital Transformation Program, Dhaka International Mobile Film Festival, and Access MIL, three outreach programs of the host organization, Media Studies and Journalism Department, University of Liberal Arts, Bangladesh. Our media partner is Daily Shomairal. In this panel, datafication, digital audiences, and media trust in Bangladesh, we have as session chair, Professor Jude William Henilo is the head of department of the host organization. Also the director of IQAC, the Institutional Quality Assurance Cell. As presenters, we have Mohammed Amir Islam, Dr. Abdul Kabil Khan, and myself, Sharkar Balba Karmal. Before I hand over to Dr. Jude this session and cross the floor to the other side of the presenters, uh, I would take this opportunity to introduce him to our audience. Professor Judy Lam Henilo, as I said, is the head of the Media Studies and Journalism Department, University of Liberal Arts, Bangladesh. He's also the director of ULAS Institutional Quality Assurance Cell, IQAC. He earned his Doctor of Philosophy and Master's degree in Communication from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. He also has undergraduate degrees in economics and management from De La Salle University, Manila. Before joining ULAB, he headed the postgraduate program of the LSPR Communication and Business Institute in Jakarta, Indonesia, and served as a research fellow at the Keset Sart University Research and Development Institute, Kurdi, in Bangkok, Thailand. He is author of the book, Community-Based Communication, A New Approach to Development Communication, and also co-editor with Professor Brian Shushmith uh, of the anthology Bangladesh's Changing Media Scape from State Control to Market Forces. He co-edited a book with Muhammad Abdul Qadir entitled Revisiting Anwar Hussain 71, Yulab and Shomoy Prakashuni. Under uh, his leadership, this department, Media Studies and Journalism Department has become not one of the, not only countries, uh, one of the best department, it has become one of the best department and, uh, in the religion and set its footprint at the global level. Under his leadership, the department has passed through the first phase of accreditation by HJMC and accredited by Global Alliance for Public Relations. It doesn't play any role. Dr. Jude was honored by CMO Asia's Education Award leadership in 2014, and he is serving as the ambassador of IAMC here in Bangladesh since 2015. So over to you, Professor Jude, to conduct the session, and I will cross over. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Barba, for the introduction. All around the world, there has been renewed interest in the study of media trust among media scholars and researchers. What are the internal and external influences on media credibility? What explains the doubt trend in media trust across the globe? What is the relationship between media literacy 
and media trust. In what circumstances do fake news become believable? What is the link between repressive laws on media freedom and media trust? In Bangladesh, there is a growing concern over media trust. It is declining. In a 2019 survey, Settles and Ahmed reported that one out of five respondents did not get their news from media organizations. They either did not have the time for it or do not give it any value. In this session, the panelists will delve on the themes of data, fiction, digital audiences, and media trust in Bangladesh. The first paper investigates the factors that affect trust in the country's new media, bearing in mind a host of internal and external influences on media performances. The second paper examines the efforts of media organizations in reaching out to digital audiences, those who consume news using digital platforms and social media, realizing that nowadays it is not a given that people will seek your individual news outlet. The third paper describes the practice of data journalism. What are the barriers? What can be done to overcome these challenges? And whether datafication can win over people's trust on the media. I would like to introduce the members of the panel. The first one is Dr. Sarkar Barbakarmal. He is currently working as assistant professor at the Media Studies and Journalism Department, University of Liberal Arts, Bangladesh. He completed both his undergraduate and graduate degrees in mass communication from the University of Rajshahi and completed his PhD from Ibaraki University in Japan. Before joining ULAD in 2013, uh, Barbak did his postdoc at the Graduate School of Science and Engineering, Ibaraki University. His research interests include ICT for development, media studies, new media, communication for development, and social network analysis. Aminul Islam is a lecturer at the Department of Media Studies and Journalism from ULAB. He's also coordinator of AXIS Media and Information Literacy, an outreach program of the department, promoting media and information literacy in Bangladesh. Aminul received his master's degree in mass communication and journalism from the University of Rajshahi. He also received a postgraduate diploma in journalism from the Asian College of Journalism in Chennai. His research interests include communication in healthcare, media psychology, cyber psychology, and social network analysis. Dr. Abdul Kabil Khan is currently working as assistant professor at our department at ULAB. He is author of the country's first complete mobile journalism book, Mobile Journalism, Journalism of Our Time, and co-author of the journalism manual, Social, Social Mobile Journalism. Uh, Kabil has trained more than 1,000 journalists, development workers, and journalism students in Bangladesh and abroad. So without further ado, I'll be asking the first presenter to come to the podium. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ajut, and welcome you all who are listening to me from around the world. So basically, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the factors that affect trust in new, new, uh, news media uh, uh, in Bangladesh. So this study is among uh, young people in the, in the country. 
So basically, before um, uh, beginning my discussion, uh, let me acknowledge uh, the people who have contributed to this study. So uh, we, 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 the authors uh, uh, of this uh, research, uh, we acknowledge uh, the, uh, the volunteer members of the XSMI because um, they have contributed a lot uh, for, for, uh, to collect the part of the data of this study. And that's all. Uh, and, 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 and in this project, uh, I have uh, two collaborators. Uh, the first one is Dr. Barbara Karmal. He's an assistant professor at the Department of Media Studies and Journalism at the University of Liberal Arts. And another one is um, Apon Das. He's a former student of the department. So uh, uh, let's, let me talk about uh, the background of this project. Uh, basically, basically, whenever we your slides. Should I need to? I need to share it. Guys, uh, for this uh, technical glitch a bit. So basically, I was I was um, I said that the uh, the in this project we have I have uh, two collaborators on Dr. Barbara Karmal, another is Apun Das. Uh, so before beginning the study, uh, actually. Okay. Is it clear? Established that the uh, the trust uh, is the uh, fundamental uh, of, uh, of 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 uh, human relations of any kinds of human relationship and the other component of a society. So a healthy uh, information ecosystem is crucial for creating, uh, upholding, and communicating social trust. Uh, and and uh, I guess application is. It's so okay. So healthy, uh, healthy. Uh, if we talk about the healthy information ecosystem, then it's all about the uh, um, the av availability of diverse, credible, and reliable, accurate, and trusted the information in a society. So. Uh, so uh, what is the new media, uh, news media in a society? What's, what's the role and what, what role it does play in, in, in a society? It's all about, um, uh, uh, it's very uh, uh, like other social institution, uh, uh, bank, uh, school, college, religion, family, uh, news media is a, is a social institution. We know, we know all about that. So it can influence uh, the trust in other institution uh, uh, of a society by creating a favorable, uh, information ecosystem. So, uh, uh, news media is very much important uh, uh, for the proper functioning uh, of the society and a, a, and a democracy. So, in the age of uh, high prevalence of misinformation and disinformation and fake news, a trust of the uh, media system uh, is very much needed and is very crucial, and it play a vital role for the proper functioning uh, of the uh, society. So trust is not necessarily important for the society and democratic process. It is important for the uh, media organization, organizations also. Uh, it's because uh, previous, if you have a look, uh, a critical look in the previous studies, then we can find that the previous researchers, the results of the previous researchers uh, reveals that there is a strong association, uh, 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 association between um, 
um, public confidence in the press and their relationship with the uh, news and the, uh, uh, the consumption of the uh, news uh, media content. So a decline of trust uh, direct, uh, affect, directly affect the people's use of, uh, of media and their revenue and, and the revenue generations of the media organizations in, in many ways. So uh, several uh, previous studies, uh, in the several previous studies, you can find that the public trust in news media uh, um, uh, around the world is declining. So let's have a, um, uh, uh, study uh, from uh, the Reuters Institute for Study of Journalism at the Oxford University. Uh, in this study, we can find that that the global uh, uh, the, the trust in news media globally declining. Yeah. So, and it is a big concern today for the academic uh, researchers in media studies and journalism, as well as uh, the media owners, media managers, even. In, 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 in uh, policy makers as well, how to study, how to understand, how to measure the trust uh, in the media organizations. So uh, researchers from around the world, uh, they have tried to understand the phenomena from diverse aspects. So some of the researchers studies this phenomena uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a news media in general. And some of the uh, 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 researchers try to understand uh, from the perspective of media types and some researchers, uh, individual media brands, journalists and media content. Basically, in this project, uh, uh, if you have a look, uh, uh, and, and, and some of the research scholars uh, try, to uh, uh, try to conceptualize uh, this phenomena, this concept, from uh, different aspects and different ways. So uh, uh, whenever, whenever we are going through some of the previous studies, you can find that that uh, the, uh, the, media, uh, the trust in media uh, is defined as media credibility. And sometimes it is defined as uh, um, uh, media trust or dinness. Uh, but in this study, we use this uh, a framework by, proposed by uh, Jasper and his colleagues. Uh, uh, they have uh, proposed a model to measure, uh, uh, the, uh, measure the dimensions of the trust. So uh, in this model, uh, they have uh, proposed that, the, that if you want to understand uh, the prevalence of trust uh, among, among their audiences or in a society, then we have to consider the five, uh, uh, five, uh, five components. The first component is uh, the news media in general, media type, individual media brand, uh, and the trust in journalists and the trust in the content. So basically, the, in this framework, uh, the uh, media in general uh, component, it uh, basically try to uh, understand that uh, generally speaking, to what extent people do have trust uh, in the uh, um, uh, in, in, in news and, and their content. So in our studies, we do actually um, uh, improvise and we didn't uh, look at uh, the media brand and the media content part. So as I said earlier, that it's work in progress. So uh, some of the uh, parts, uh, uh, some of the components uh, will not be presented, uh, presenting in this, um, uh, in this research or in this presentation. So before move, moving on, uh, as, I, uh, as, you, as, uh, as you know that the Bangladesh uh, uh, is a country uh, uh, of a relatively uh, young, uh, young people, so where, uh, around 20% of total populations are uh, um, uh, as between 15 to, uh, 15 to 24 years. So that's why actually we try to focus on, to understand the perspective of the, uh, of the, of the people about uh, their uh, relationship with the uh, media, uh, news media organizations. So basically, and we try to understand this relations through uh, the lens of uh, uh, the trust. So basically, if you have a uh, look uh, in the landscape, uh, of uh, media industry in the country. So it has really, really a diverse and vibrant media uh, uh, media uh, industry uh, with uh, more than 3000 uh, newspapers uh, and, and, and uh, online portals and more than 40 uh, television channels and uh, around 60 uh, radio stations. So the big question is that, why is this research? Why is it important? Why uh, have 
uh, began this research and why it, it has attracted us. Basically, uh, most of the previous research uh, uh, in the context uh, uh, have been uh, uh, done and uh, from the context of developing countries, with, especially from the Western countries. So little is known uh, about this phenomena uh, 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 in the context of uh, Bangladesh. So keeping in the mind that this is very new or new concept and this is there is little known about it from uh, uh, about it, then actually we aim to understand, ex explore the level of trust in news media among uh, young people in terms of their demographic characteristics, basically. And uh, we try to examine the factors that influence um, the trust in news media among young people in the country. So in doing that, uh, we have uh, taken a multi uh, uh, mixed method approach uh, and, and, and uh, we uh, basically uh, selected the study populations, as we said earlier, that the young people in the country. So in Bangladesh, there are more than 20, sorry, 32 million adolescents, and which is 21% uh, uh, of total populations. So basically the big question is, is that, who are the young? So who will we uh, uh, study? So uh, basically we try to uh, adapt the definitions of the uh, national uh, youth policy of 2017. So it defines the uh, people as between uh, 18 to 35, uh, 35 years they are young. But in another uh, 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 official document defines the young people as um, 15 to 29 years. But in this study, we uh, understood or we defined uh, the young people as uh, 18 to uh, 35 years old, or uh, uh, the people who are uh, 18 to 35, 35 years old. So we collected data uh, by using uh, different approaches, and and um, and then for this uh, for, for collecting data, we uh, recruited uh, 20 uh, enumerators. They were living uh, in different when we are collecting data. They are living in different parts of the country, and they collected. We collected this data uh, uh, both face-to-face uh, -face, uh, interview and and uh, web based uh, 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 platforms like uh, Google Google Form. And we collected this data uh, between uh, um, December 2021 and February 2022. So the, we recruited the participants uh, basically using convenient uh, random sampling method. And, uh, and in this process, we got, uh, uh, initially we've got uh, 513 responses. And, 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 and finally uh, used in, for final analysis, uh, um, I mean, uh, 430. So basically, uh, we we excluded uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, the data because of uh, there were some inconsistencies. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, we use uh, uh, SPSS and uh, 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 software for analyzing data. So if you have a look in the uh, uh, results, so they did. The demographic uh, features of the participants. Most of the participants uh, are uh, as between um, 18 to 13, uh, 23 years, and and they are uh, uh, students in most cases and undergraduate undergraduate students. So we try to understand the the, the co co media consumption behavior of the people, and it is very interesting to uh, to see that uh, most of the participants. Uh, 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 they spend their time at least for six hours a day, but they do spend time uh, 25 minutes a day uh, uh, in reading newspaper, 32 minutes for, uh, uh, for uh, online portals and only uh, 44 minutes for uh, televisions. So in most cases, they do get uh, news or through online news portals and, 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 uh, and the main mode for uh, consuming news is mobile phone apps. So uh, in our study, we can find that uh, uh, the print is still the most uh, trusted medium for news in the country. And, and then the people uh, have uh, uh, very little trust uh, 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 as a professional group in, um, in journalists. So journalists, we asked people whether uh, uh, journalists are fair in covering the news. So only 20, Oh, sorry, only 12% of the participants agreed that. And, and uh, in the case of 
or whether journalists are unbiased in covering news, only 7.9% participants agreed that uh, journalists are unbiased. So it's really, really a grim picture uh, for a country. And we, the overall trust in news media, if you have a look that is very low. Uh, the overall trust uh, uh, in the uh, uh, in the news media in Bangladesh uh, is very low. So in between 64% uh, uh, participants uh, of the study uh, uh, informed that uh, they have a low trust in information from the news media. So uh, uh, basically, if you have uh, 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 if you have a look in the in uh, in our data, that you can find that. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the male tend to have less trust compared to the female uh, gender groups and uh, trust is uh, completely associated with, with genders and the people with uh, having low education, they tend to trust uh, 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 less. So people uh, with the higher education, they tend to trust uh, media uh, more. So another uh, thing is that, and if you have a look that the people living in urban and metropolitan areas, they uh, actually, they have a uh, low level of trust compared to the people living in uh, um, uh, rural and semi urban urban areas. Multiple factors, there might have multiple factor, factors behind these reasons, but in, in the future, uh, data analysis certainly will be uh, discussing more. Uh, now I have to be short because I have a very short time. So uh, if you have a uh, look in the factors that influence trust, then we can have that actually people who to consider a media organization to trust or not to trust. So they do focus mainly whether that media organization is fair uh, and the unbiased or uh, whether they do sensationalize or they give priority in uh, 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 advertisement over the news story. In our findings, we can find that the, the, the news media are, in, in this statement, the news media are fair when covering the news. Only 11% uh, participant uh, agreed to, to this uh, 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 statement. And the new media are unbiased. Uh, only 18% uh, uh, participant uh, think that news media are uh, uh, unbiased. So it's very, very uh, 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 actually uh, negative picture we have. And 58% participant of participants of this study believe that media, news media organizations sensationalize uh, the news content and information, and they do uh, give priority uh, to advertisement over uh, the news story. So uh, basically, only 26%, uh, uh, sorry, uh, it's really, really uh, uh, concerning matter that only 26% uh, participants believe that, um, uh, I'm sorry, yes, sir, uh, believe that they have uh, trust, uh, 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 sorry, uh, uh, trust in news media organizations. So it's really, really big pictures. Uh, so basically, if I say that uh, this is a uh, uh, project ongoing, so it has some limitations. So basically, big limitation is that uh, if we want to generalize the findings, so we need to do this work more, uh, or, or the, uh, this sort of works among the people with larger sample size. So small sample size was the uh, main limitation for this project. and. We have some recommendations. So in future studies uh, uh, and the researcher, we recommend that this sort of study should be conducted among larger sample size and there must have industry academia coll collaborations because this dynamics is very complex. So this dynamics should be understood from within the industry and outside, outside the industry. And, and, and the research team also should be uh, composed of uh, journalists and academic uh, and, and if we want to understand the level of trust really, then we, we have to build, we have to develop a scale that is contextually, culturally validated in the country. So we aim to actually through this project, we aim to build a, a trust scale uh, that will be helpful for uh, understanding uh, the, uh, the, this phenomena from the context of the uh, country. So that is all I had to uh, tell you. So if you have any questions, certainly we'll have interaction in the next session. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Aminun, for your presentation. So basically, uh, the presentation of uh, Aminun is confirming uh, the findings of an earlier survey in 2019 uh, done by Sittles and Ahmed about the declining trust on the media by the Bangladeshi audience. So that's a little sad to hear. So now let's proceed to the next presenter, uh, Barbak, uh, please. The screen is yours.
so good afternoon uh, so you already know me that uh, i am uh, shokar barbak karmal and i work for the media studies and journalism department and that i probably do many times and yeah thank you dr jude for the introduction and uh, of course uh, for giving me the screen and uh, yeah as uh, dr jude already uh, said in his uh, introduction to this panel that these three studies are very much connected and they are about the declining uh, trust scenario regarding the media and in that scenario you know, how the news media are trying to engage with the audience and especially in uh, this uh, era of digital media when the media is going through a transition transition from uh, online to uh, offline to online from the traditional media to uh, digital media also there are so many different factors those are putting the sustainability viability uh, of media in question uh, so it's it's a, of course a very important uh, study and like even if we do not consider any other thing why to study audience because audience are the boss audience mean business if, if we can engage with the audience uh, from the point of view of any media organization audience uh, must be business because at the end of the day whatever social responsibility we may impose on the media organizations they need to earn money because otherwise they cannot feed the people who are working for those organizations. So audience uh, strategy or uh, engaging strategy with the audience is uh, very important. So let us uh, have a look again into the scenario that we were talking about. And I think we all know all these things that uh, advent of digital technology is making impact in every sphere of life globally. <laughs> like this is uh, just a reputation uh, for me to say this. But still, we, we need to put this in the picture. And due to this, the nature of engagement in conversations uh, have been drastically changed, be it at interpersonal level or in case of mass communication. We nowadays, we see if we consider the Gen Z people, uh, sometimes you know, I am a, an early millennial and I sometimes feel irritated when I see uh, the Gen Z people uh, they would be sitting together side by side and they will be chatting on WhatsApp. Like, I, I, I cannot really uh, take that because uh, I have grown up uh, in a suburb and uh, we used to really spend a lot of time with friends and not through WhatsApp or every messenger. We used to talk, still we used to talk and talk. And when we are together, we mingle, we do not look into our smartphones and all. Uh, but anyway, uh, so that's that's the scenario. This digital audience, we need to think about that. The news organizations, even in entertainment industry, also need to think about them. And then, COVID nineteen came in uh, twenty twenty. COVID nineteen put us inside our rooms, created bubble. So for two years we could not go out as. A, we used to go all the time. And uh, so the interactions in the digital environments rapidly increased during this. And for all these things, the media organizations globally undergoing massive transformation in terms of their content production, uh, reaching audiences and monetizing contents. If we look into the emerging scenario uh, of digital media and digital audience, then uh, this is the overview of internet use globally as of January, 2022. So among uh, about 8 million people in the world now, we see that 62.5% of internet access and they uh, spent about six hours, uh, not six, almost 70 hours time uh, in the internet and 92.1% people use uh, internet with their mobile phones. This is the growth I do not need to explain, like this uh, bars can already uh, tell us all that how rapid this growth has been. Similar picture in the growth of social media use. Now, 
coming to Bangladesh scenario. If you look on the left side, then that's the scenario in 2011, 10 years, ago, actually uh, about 11 years now. And then 2021, that is 10 years from 2011. And in 2011, you can see there were just literally a handful of internet users. You see that the internet penetration was not even 1%. So uh, this is a round figure and that, that made it 1%. And uh, social media users were also you know, were very low. And most of the people were still in uh, the old button phones. And, uh, but yet uh, the mobile phone penetration was uh, already kind of good as a developing country. It was 56%, which is now you know, over 100% because many people have more than one connection. So if we consider the number of uh, subscriptions, then uh, that is more than 100%. Then, you see, uh, in, in 2021, the scenario is quite different from uh, that was 2011. Similarly, uh, in 2011, uh, you see the annual digital growth was uh, 80% because that time we were growing uh, very fast from nothing to upwards. So the percentage was very high. But uh, even 10 years later, you can see that there is growth of uh, active social media users by 25% per year and 192 uh, percent growth in internet users. As we are already saturated in uh, mobile connections, the growth is uh, now slower uh, if we compare that uh, with 2011. And uh, one scenario did not change much uh, that uh, most of the users or majority of the users still uh, connect to the internet with their mobile devices. And this is very important. Like uh, when you create content and when you distribute content over the digital platforms, you need to think what kind of devices your users are using. Otherwise your contents cannot be accessed freely. Uh, with, freely means uh, conveniently, uh, not without money. And uh, uh, of course uh, this should be uh, responsive in the uh, language of uh, web development. Looking to the social media profile, you can see in 2011, as uh, we already seen before as well, that uh, it was uh, very low, the number of mobile, uh, sorry, the number of internet users and uh, social media users. And social media meant actually Facebook back then. It still means Facebook. If you uh, ask 100 Bangladeshi, what is social media? Probably 90 or 80 will say social media is Facebook. If you just look into the uh, the graphs on the, or the infographs uh, on the right side, you can easily understand that. So we, we have overwhelming number of social media users and uh, just for information, in 2018, Hakka became the second largest Facebook city in the world. Okay, so uh, the scenario is that the fact is digital media changed the distribution model and YouTube not only affected the distribution, it changed the whole process flow. There is a new term or uh, probably we can say there is a new profession called YouTubers, they emerged and uh, they are actually the transformed consumers. Okay, so the digital platforms transformed consumers to Consumers. Now, anyone can produce and consume. And in this era, subscribers, fans, and followers emerged as very important concepts. Okay. Now, when the digital uh, media started to emerge, that affected really the revenue because the revenue uh, started to be uh, divided between the print and uh, online or digital. And we can uh, see easily that print uh, are you know, getting behind digital. If we look in the uh, US statistics in the time between 2000 to 2015, the print ad, ad revenue was uh, $60 billion per year, which was reduced to cut to one third. Okay, so like to, from 60 billion in 15 years, 20 billion. And online ad revenue, that was 1.84 billion in 2000, and it 
increased to almost uh, uh, three times by 2010. Okay, and then uh, it became 124.6 billion by 2019. So you can you can easily see the uh, picture that how one side is declining sharply and other side is uh, increasing very sharply. And this uh, actually put the print industry uh, under massive challenge. And uh, th this actually uh, not only challenge that uh, created opportunities as well, but at the beginning it was, it, it was a huge channel uh, challenge. When the revenue was cut, the media uh, industry, the, especially the news outlets, they uh, were under severe recession. They were under financial crisis. So they uh, had no way but to let go their uh, employees. There were job cuts. And we saw that even very uh, renowned, globally renowned media outlets like the Telegraph went shut. In Bangladesh, sorry. In Bangladesh, the journey of digital media uh, is uh, newer than uh, the other part of, of the world. In 1995, uh, one of the national dailies uh, in English language, the Daily Star went online. And uh, we had the first online news portal, bdnews24.com, launched in 2004. And in Bangladesh, if we consider uh, what was the first paid digital content, then uh, that were welcome tunes used in the uh, you know, mobile phone ringing tone. I, I think you all are familiar with what is a welcome tone. And uh, among the news outlets, Totamalu is the first one to uh, launch any paid e-paper. All the other you know, newspapers who has online versions, those are completely free. And now all major media outlets have online presence, have social media pages. Many newspapers and radio station now stream video online. You can. Could you imagine that 10 years ago or 15 years ago, a newspaper streaming video online, having live conversations, having live panels. Uh, in Bangladesh also, we are having out to platforms. The Bongo was the first one in uh, Bangladesh and they actually started uh, by opening a, a YouTube channel. And uh, by 2021, they had uh, about 2 million subscribers. Now let's look into the online ad scenario, the revenue, the most important part of uh, any business to sustain, even for media, which we usually uh, tend to think that uh, media are social organizations. Okay, so uh, again, you, you can see a very sharp rise in the uh, market of online ad. In, in uh, 2017, it was only 2018 uh, million US dollar which is uh, now in 2022, 351 million uh, US dollar. And it is projected to reach 413 uh, by the year 2026. And more importantly, half the revenue go to Facebook and Google, mainly through YouTube. Now, you know, if a country's half, half the revenue that uh, is you know, supposed to be the revenue of the uh, media outlets in a country or news outlets in the country. If half of that revenue go outside the country, then you know, how this can sustain, the industry can sustain. So uh, it's, it's really time for our, uh, not only news outlets, all our uh, media outlets, be it in the news industry or in the entertainment industry to think about this, that how they can keep all this revenue in their pocket. So this is why, uh, we, we uh, try to look into the matter that what is the situation uh, that our uh, news outlets are in. So I think the challenges and uh, opportunities are already uh, in our mind. So I'm not going into there. Uh, this is the research objective. Uh, we just try to examine uh, the awareness and practice of audience and content strategies of news media organization in Bangladesh, that how they are uh, trying to reach the audience. The audience no longer come to us, the news organizations. So we need to uh, go to them. And uh, then our methodology was qualitative. We uh, did in-depth interview of uh, media managers, 
and 15 uh, major media outlets. Uh, and two were not so major, they were outside Dhaka. Uh, but still, we, we tried to just look into uh, how they do things outside Dhaka. And uh, these were done between December 2021 and February 2022. We did uh, thematic analysis. Actually, I should say we are doing thematic and uh, analysis and discourse analysis because this is still uh, a study on progress. So we are not conclusive yet uh, with our findings, but these are some of the findings that uh, if we consider the engagement and uh, audience strategy, content strategy, then only a few leading news outlets have dedicated team for audience engagement and content strategy. And most of the news outlets are not aware of audience segmentation and content strategy. For example, uh, there are such trends that uh, baby boomers are more into the conventional uh, mode of uh, media, for example, newspaper, film, uh, etc. The Generation X and millennials, they are in, into both kind of, uh, they are into the conventional media, also they are in digital media. But if you consider Gen Z, like uh, when Aminul, my colleague presented uh, his study, he saw a very, uh, very low trust in media and the most of the population uh, in, in that study was actually Gen Z, the age between uh, 18 and 23. Uh, in, in that study. So Gen Z people, they do not trust media because you know uh, they do not consume also the traditional media must. They are into digital media. They are uh, you know, into the media that will give them on-demand access to content and uh, they will have the content on their own time, not with family. They will go solo, the hot start tagline. So as we saw that only a few news outlets, they use Google and YouTube analytics to gather insights about their content consumption, but most are not equipped with necessary manpower to use the insights. And this is also a fact that in our country, Bangladesh, we still are uh, not producing enough manpower to the cook strategies based on the analytics. So there is a gap in academia as well. And none of the news outlets that we uh, talked with uh, conduct any audience study. And then uh, as we already mentioned that uh, some of the media outlets, they are trying to go beyond what they are or they were. For example, one of the major uh, national dailies, or I might say that the most reached Bangla national daily, Prathamalo, they now publishes English. It's, it's a Bangla language daily. But in their online edition, Prothomalo, they host news items in English. On the other hand, the uh, most rich English daily, the daily start, they are now providing contents in Bangla. So this is how you know, they, they are trying to uh, catch the other side of the uh, audience. And uh, many newspapers are now being a multimedia focus through uh, the uh, many many outlets are trying to come up with multimedia contents and they are doing uh, live conversations they are doing talk show like prothomalo does this daily star bangla uh, sorry dhaka tribune and there are a few more names they are trying to engage with the audience uh, both offline and online uh, they have different uh, readers forums they organize uh, different festivals uh, they uh, award students, uh, award them scholarships, uh, etc. And this is how they are trying to build communities. Also, they are providing some spaces for citizen journalism. I am not going into more details because my time is almost up. And they are also trying to uh, come up with niche contents. They are uh, also uh, giving multiple versions of paper. Like uh, if, again, I go with the uh, example of Prothomalo and Daily Star, Prothomalo has three versions. One is their print newspaper, their online uh, edition, and then they have their e-paper, which is digital, but still look like the printed newspaper. And now Prothomalo is uh, also selling the subscription of their uh, e-paper. Daily Star uh, has such e-paper, online edition of their uh, newspaper, and they have a print. So this is how they are trying to cope, but still, I think there are a lot of uh, lack 
in you know uh, reaching the digital audience so we will come up with uh, more uh, analysis and findings uh, when we are completely done with the study and probably then we'll be able to make some recommendations and of course we will uh, look forward to your comments and suggestions how to improve this study thank you very much okay thank you very much uh, dr barba um well uh, oh, i'm glad that you have uh, presented the study uh, and showing how the media in Bangladesh is trying to reach digital audiences, uh, which really means building communities because you need to build trust to gain those communities. And that gone are the days that the media take it for granted that people will watch them and go to them because that is not the case right now. You really have to build your own community and in a community, trust should be there. So let's now uh, proceed to the third uh, panel uh, presenter. So Dr. Kabil. All right, very good evening, ladies and gentlemen who have joined with us from all over the world. And thanks goes to uh, Professor Jude William Hainilo, the chair of today's uh, research panel. Uh, and uh, thanks for giving me this page uh, to share another uh, interesting uh, findings and predictions. Uh, and uh, I wanna talk also the emerging fields of journalism that we have been talking over the last one and a half hours so the data journalism uh, and uh, what is going on here in Bangladesh. Uh, so I would like to bring you some of the ground uh, you know, findings uh, as um, I need to apologize because this is an ongoing research and uh, we are still uh, working on, especially uh, we are far away a bit of collecting our qualitative data and the quantity data is, is still we are having. So this is some parts of the study, so I will not uh, uh, unavail uh, to disclose everything in this particular research. So with this study, uh, we have uh, another two collaborators who are uh, already uh, with us uh, in the dais and uh, with us, um, Dr. Barbak Kamral, uh, who also uh, the lead author of this uh, uh, research project and uh, who is also the assistant professor of uh, media studies and journalism department and also we have uh, mr amnul islam who is the lecturer also the same department so thank you gentlemen for contributing this particular research uh, so uh, if uh, i would like to give a little bit background so especially uh, what is happening uh, not only in bangladesh but all over the world there is a trending changes in the terms of content production process as already we have seen in the previous uh, uh, you know presentation that dr barbara has already underlined that more and more convergence and integration with the digital platforms are evolving uh, and this is just uh, you know uh, uh, a picture that he shared but this is happening also in the other parts even in the western countries uh, i mean we have seen more and more data driving storytellings are doing by the bbc by the cnn by the al jazeera so that is happening uh, from the last couple of years so now people are more love to watch or engage with the visual storytellings, uh, how you can present your data with more visual, you know, uh, using more effects, using more charts and how to make it more colorful because the young generation who will consume your content, they would love to, you know, follow this content. So you have to, you know, 
not only think about the journalistic uh, you know approaches but also think some aesthetic approaches so how you can make it more visual uh, interesting and uh, you know in, in informative as well and uh, in bangladesh contents uh, we are not having the practice of data journalism in a regular basis only when something big events are happen here uh, or something like in a global perspective if we talk about the u.s presidential election uh, 2016 or even the bangladesh national parliament election that happened in 2018 so these are the biggest you know uh, episodes where we have seen the practice of data journalism uh, you know uh, had more impact in the terms of content productions and and people who have some bad intention they use so many you know rumors they use so many fabricated reports by using different types of you know the data so still there is not you know the result has not been published but some people already revealed the you know the election results so that how they are making you know the data and use the data and you know the misguided the audiences so we have to be very careful not only practicing you know the data journalism but also how to protect and you know debunking this kind of you know the fabricated news so that also you know uh, happened in those particular uh, events and uh, in bangladesh uh, we are just started uh, practicing uh, data journalism not only in uh, the professional point of view in the in the mid mass media industries, but also in the academy area. And one of the gro groundbreaking is the offering data journalism course by the University of Levi Lars Bangladesh under the Media Studies and Journalism Department. And this is this is the this is the first time here in Bangladesh that you know students can learn the, all the ins and outs of the data journalism, and later on they can practice in the industry. And if we move forward, so we can also see that that when we are talking about the data journalism so there are so many things that are coming together so there should be a readiness of the industries so there should be some people who you know know how to prepare the you know, data driving and storytelling and that is one of the lacking areas that our industries are facing so very few people can you know the can develop can design and can implement data driving storytelling. So it needs, you know, a solid knowledge about the data driving storytelling, which is really missing in Bangladesh. And uh, there was a study done by Mr. Aminul Islam, who is uh, also here with us. So he tried to find out the readiness of uh, the database storytelling here in Bangladesh and what are the problems are, you know, existing here in Bangladesh and. Uh, you know, uh, and how there should there can be, you know, um, uh, can bring some changes of the, you know, uh, trustness among among the media peoples and the political figures. Because in Bangladesh, the you know, uh, so many problems the industry peoples, the practitioners are facing, and there is also a lack of trustness here in Bangladesh that also have mentioned in this study. Uh, done by Mr. Aminul Islam. So he did this study and that was one of the groundbreaking study here in Bangladesh. Very few studies you can find that, you know, uh, you know, underlined and uh, mentioned the overall, you know, uh, the scenario of data driving storytelling in Bangladesh, very few. So we need more research and more discussions how to improve it. So, but not uh, so much bad news. We have also have seen that some of the, uh, you know, leading uh, news industries are are trying to practice data driving storytelling. And so one of the examples is here I brought to you uh, that the business standard, the English daily in Bangladesh, they have been trying from the very beginning to, you know, to use more data and, and you know, reveal their stories. So here is one of the example that uh, I found online. So they made uh, some stats uh, using different, you know, icons uh, and that, you know, after looking onto these uh, infographs, you can get so many things within a very short time. So that is the beauty of you know the data driven storytelling. So you don't need to consume or don't need to you know invest so many times to read a story. And the young generations in Bangladesh, not only Bangladesh but all over the world, they want today more snackable, bite-sized, and you know short forms of stories. And data driven storytelling can bring that to the young audiences who you know, don't read newspapers, who, you know, don't watch television. So how we can bring them the newsy content. So I think data uh, driving storytelling can help us uh, figure these problems. So what are the objectives that we have set uh, in this particular research? So as I have mentioned already that uh, not so much studies have done yet in Bangladesh perspectives. So we also try to understand, uh, you know, the overall, you know, perception 
of our journalists, what they're thinking uh, about the data journalism, not that much of, you know, uh, knowledge they have uh, whenever we are, you know, uh, conducting this service. Uh, uh, so especially the scenario uh, really holds in the outside of Dhaka. So uh, that's why we, we try to understand their perception. And what is the current practice of uh, data journalism or who are the leading funds um, from the industries who are using the data driven storytelling frequently uh, other than uh, the news industries and and is the industry uh, you know are ready to produce data driving storytelling so so what kind of you know um, skills or what kind of you know devices or you know the technically uh, you know uh, supports the industry required because if you want to create uh, some really, uh, you know, big database storytelling. So you need to buy some professional, you know, uh, softwares and also some other elements. So are they ready to invest that? So that's another question to find out from these guys. So what uh, is the methodology that we adopted for this particular research? So we want to, uh, we want to uh, find a greater way um, of, uh, you know, the things that is happening. So that's why we we have adopted a mixed method approach. So the data will be both quantitative and the qualitative. So the survey, the survey has already uh, been underway and uh, we have already received a significant uh, portion of the, the data from the surveys. And we used different types of questions like the mostly the closed ended questions. And there were some, you know, uh, Likert scales, um, dichotomous questions, uh, and, and there are also some you know, open ended questions. So we want to uh, dedicatedly we have to hear their perceptions. And on the other hand, we are planning to you know apply some in depth interviews uh, from two perspectives, from the reporter's point of view and also from the media managers who can really talk about their stance, their you know overall readiness to implement the data driven storytelling and the overall um, data journalism. And we used uh, Google form to do disseminate our questionnaires uh, among uh, to our you know target audiences and uh, we uh, we plan to reach 200 journalists uh, uh, that is our estimated sample size and we use different types of question formats that I already say so here is the presentation of uh, the survey data uh, that uh, we have received so at the beginning you can get the overall demographic background so who are basically um, you know the people who have joined with us so mostly dominated by the male journalists so more than 90 percent people are are from the male gender and uh, uh, in terms of their you know uh, the ages so mostly people uh, who are from the 30 to 40 also the young people the young journalists mostly we have we were, uh, our target audience because and they are the most tech savvy but we also uh, had uh, you know the respondents who who are 66 year olds so there were a, you know a diversify of audiences that we reached starting from 21 and in 66 and uh, if you look their uh, educational uh, attainment, so mostly people who are higher educated, so 48% people have completed their master's degrees. So that's a very good positive sign that they are aware about the emerging fields of their professions. And uh, let's talk about the questions that we have asked them. So first we try to understand their perception or how they can define the term data journalism. So basically we have found different types of answers and mostly those answers uh, were connected uh, with these particular uh, themes that they say that, well, we need to write a reports of where we should use the numbers and figures and facts that we can say data journalism. And some people also say that, yeah, data journalism is one of the emerging fields of journalism. And is, this is a modern journalism because uh, none of them have studied data journalism. None of them have passed any particular trainings. So for them, it's a, you know, a groundbreaking. So that's about their understanding. And uh, then we ask them uh, how they can associate uh, such type of terminology in the data journalism. So for example, in data journalism, basically you should use different types of graphs, visual charts, or infographs, uh, statistics, tables, pie charts, so many things. So what do they think? So are they are connecting these elements with the data journalism? So yeah, most of them say that the numbers and figures, whenever we are using in our storytelling, that is also connecting with the data journalism. And uh, how they you know, use uh, data journalism in their work, especially 
uh, are they using frequently or how, what they are saying they also said yes we are using uh, data in our storytelling uh, in different ways because when you ask questions that is also the area or way of collecting the data so most of them said yes we are using uh, so how frequently they are using the data in their stories so they said um, it depends uh, if the assignment requires you know more stats numbers and figures we you know we collected those things or you know we we can use them as per our requirements so that is also their answers and the types of uh, you know um, the database storytelling they can you know uh, they can uh, use whenever they are they want to storytelling and they said um, uh, we are mostly use uh, infographs uh, when we see uh, you know, or, or you know, uh, collect the data and we want to create infographics. So infographics is the driving position in terms of the creation of data driven storytelling. And if we talk about the bit, so what particular bit or areas they usually contribute when they are practicing data based journalism. So here very interesting things that they say when we, you know, when we work uh, you know, the crime reports or when we write about something, you know, uh, connecting with the uh, criminal activities. Uh, and that time we mostly use more data to reveal the facts, to disclose the findings, and that required more research and more data. So that is their, you know, uh, uh, understandings that where they can uh, use more data to reveal one particular areas or beats. So from where they can collect the data, what are the sources? Uh, from where they can get the open data or who can provide them the data. That is another interesting, I know the questions and we have seen that uh, they mostly depends on the public organization. So the public platforms, uh, government organizations and so on. And from there, they mostly use their data to, you know, to complete or to write a story. And uh, then we ask them whenever you are using data uh, or you know practicing data-based storytelling uh, do you think that uh, increase your skills your productivity in the industry or do you think more valuable in your, your organization yes they said um, more than 75 percent people said yes it definitely increased uh, and enhanced my journalistic qualities and skills and uh, and that's a very good uh, positive sign and uh, what are the requirements uh, they need or the skills they need to practice you know such a specialized journalism which is data journalism and they said yes uh, you know well, we need uh, some you know uh, special uh, uh, you know skills and they agreed with this statement that uh, yes um, we agreed that we need some special you know skills to practice the data driven storytelling uh, and then um, we also asked uh, what are the specified skills do you require to practice uh, data journalism? Then they said, most of them, they said that, yes, uh, we are far behind to analyze the data. So they want to learn about uh, how to, you know, uh, analyze the data or how to code the data or, you know, the clean the data and then, you know, use those data in their storytelling. But also the significant numbers also came from the basic maths and stats. That is another uh, area so where they want to increase their skills. And, uh, and finally, we also we uh, ask them that uh, how you can define yourself the level of knowledge on data journalism that you have right now. So some of them they say that, yes, uh, I, have, I have some good knowledge. Uh, uh, and some people said, yes, um, I have some average knowledge about the data journalism. So I need more you know, knowledge or practice. And then and what are the platforms? or destinations, these journalists are, you know, publishing their content. So either the platform is the digital or, you know, the mainstream media, the radio, television, what's. So here we got also the interesting findings that mostly these journalists are producing their content for the digital platforms or also for the digital audience that Dr. Baharbak uh, just, uh, you know, mentioned in his uh, research that mostly people are now focusing more on digital platforms. So these uh, journalists are producing their content for uh, the first priority they are giving, uh, you know, online and the digital platforms, and uh, and uh, is the industry is ready to practice a database journalism, or they need more 
times to you know uh, to understand these uh, emerging fields of journalism um, um some people say it, uh, no the industry is not uh, ready or they don't have any data based unit or section or department of where mostly they produce data driven storytelling so there is nothing so we have asked more than 150 journalists so none of them have said that they don't have a dedicated a data unit so that's uh, that's a scenario of the whole news industries in bangladesh so they are you know, the lacking to create a platform. So what's the result that we can say in the discussion? So we have seen that a lack of awareness is still, you know, um, um, happening in the industry. So we need more discussions, uh, especially among the news managers who are taking the decision uh, in their industries. And also we need more investments uh, in terms of, you know, uh, to develop uh, the skills of the journalists uh, buy different equipment, softwares, uh, and uh, support their staffs to know about the data journalism and practice as well. Uh, so this this uh, survey has that uh, particular findings, and uh, and we can discuss those later on. And some limitations that we have in this particular study, especially go to, uh, if we talk about our sample size. Uh, so only the two hundred samples, uh, also not enough to come on on a generalization of our findings. So we want to increase more in our further studies. And also uh, here is missing qualitative insights at all, as I already mentioned that we didn't manage to conduct some in-depth interviews. Uh, and uh, uh, with my concluding notes, uh, I want to say that uh, more research should be done or some more engagements and discussions uh, uh, should we require um, you know, to know the stats uh, and the findings and the overall you know, transition of the data journalism all over the world. Uh, we need to go more on grassroots levels. People who are far away from the city, uh, they don't have that much knowledge about the data journalism. And we also need some consciousness and then, you know, the readiness from the management level of the industry peoples. And we need more training and develop the, you know, skills and empowerment of our journalists who are working in the field. And uh, there is also a challenges of collecting the data, especially from the open sources, from the government bodies and the corporate sectors, and how we can, you know, utilize those data if there are some legal framework. So we uh, we should we should not violate any, you know, um, legal aspects while practicing uh, journalism, and we don't we can't, uh, you know, cross our ethical bar barriers. So with that note, I am concluding my, you know, presentations. If you have any more questions, I would love to answer those. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Kabil, uh, for giving us a snapshot uh, about the practice of data journalism uh, in Bangladesh. So we'll now proceed to the question and answer, and we have 15 minutes uh, to be able to do this. And, um, you know, just to start off with the discussion, uh, I have placed some questions uh, to the panel members. So who would like to go first? Okay, uh, Dr. Barbach, please. Uh, so just to read the question, how can data analytics win over the trust of digital audiences in Bangladesh? Uh, that is a very difficult question to answer that uh, can really uh, data analytics can win over the trust because uh, it's not only the data analytics, it is also our attitude towards data, like what we tend to believe and we tend to not believe. And that actually has to do something with our education. More importantly, that has something to do with media and information literacy. Because if we look into the scenario in the digital world, we often see vital things. And uh, many of these virals are just rumors and like most of the times, I think, I mean, we worked on such a study where uh, the students, they just share things without even reading it properly, without checking the source, without understanding whether this will be a good thing to share or whether this will be something very harmful for his own friends and family, even uh, for her or him or for the society. So I think that is one, one big challenge to deal with, uh, like uh, not only the data analytics or data journalism, I think 
MIL, Media and Information Literacy, is uh, another important aspect uh, to win the tr trust of people through media. Well, uh, Dr. Barbuck, I just want to redirect uh, the question uh, because uh, if the media organizations are the ones who conduct data analytics. Uh, they use data analytics to be able to understand the digital audience. So, uh, so we're looking at it from the producer's point of view and not from the consumer's point of view. So if they do data analytics and another firm does not do data analytics, the one who does data analytics, would that be able to win over the trust of the digital audience? This that will give a fair ground for the media organizations to try because you know without knowing who I am engaging with, uh, if we just keep shooting arrows, that might hit the target, might not. But uh, when we know the target, then you know there is a more chance to hit the target. Like uh, I just uh, gave a glimpse uh, the. Baby boomers, they are more into the traditional media. The Gen Z, they are uh, almost exclusively in digital media. So like now, if I want to target Gen Z, then I, I should focus on what they are interested about. And that should be through the digital platform. If I am a content producer, uh, that should be, that, that is the number one point to start with. Then there are other things like, uh, not everyone will be into sports or not everyone will be into uh, the celebrities or fandom. So I, I need to pick up uh, as media organizations. Of course, if, if I have all those data and if I can use that appropriately uh, as a content producer, then I, I can uh, hope for better results. Last week, I was talking to a journalist and he was commenting something like this. Uh, because the digital platforms are rather new and that uh, journalists are moving into it, uh, they are sort of copying what social influencers are doing. And therefore, in a way, uh, trying to act more like an influencer rather than a journalist. Is this the right way to win the trust of the digital audience? What's your take on it? I take, you know, like when I am trying to uh, win someone, then that cannot come by mimicking others' identity. My identity should be mine. And like if I uh, mimic more the social influencers, then I will go further from my audience because what they are getting already from the social influencer, why they will come to me for those? And especially when uh, they do not have much trust in me. So I think the media organizations should not try, uh, try to mimic the quote unquote social influencers. Uh, they, they should uh, try uh, their own way and they, they should uh, rely on their own contents and uh, they should be innovative and should look more into it what uh, they are into the Zen, especially the Zen people who are the native in digital platforms, of course, the other generations as well. Okay, so let's proceed uh, to the question for Mr. Aminul. How can we reverse the trend of declining trust in the media in Bangladesh? What are the ways? Well, um... Certainly, it's an interesting question also. As well as it's a very timely and big questions also. So before answering to your questions, uh, let me tell a small story. In the morning when I was coming uh, uh, to this conference, so I was coming by a rickshaw and a ambulance, an ambulance was going by and I was very close to that ambulance and another person who was traveling by a rickshaw and he was asking me, okay, look, is there a, they are really uh, patient in the ambulance. So he was not trusting that, and, and that ambulance was, uh, was playing a siren, something like that, so that uh, that can get uh, the, 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 the overcome the jam, uh, traffic jam. So it was really, really striking for me. And, uh, and, and how the level of 
trust in a social institution like medical equipment and medical vehicles. So people, we are living in a society when or where we do not even trust an ambulance can carry a real uh, uh, patient. So it's really, really a big question for the media organizations also, because if the media organizations uh, cannot be trusted by the people or by their audiences, what will happen? People will not uh, consume the content. And people, if the people do not uh, consume the content, they will lose the revenue. And if they lose the revenue, uh, they will be they will be they will not be sustaining and and, and the, the power political power and other power will try to uh, um, try try to dominate and democracy will be mal mal malfunctioning so uh, to this question to answer these questions um, certainly um, my answer would be uh, the media organizations must, must be uh, socially more responsible first and they must understand that the audience today those who are digitally native are not full they have uh, they have ample of information they have vast information in their hand to check so though there are a, there's a lack of uh, literacy uh, media and information literacy is a big question so journalists uh, or media organizations must understand that uh, content is a king so they have to produce quality content first if they uh, if they want to reverse uh, these situations and, uh, uh, and and gain the trust so from our uh, research, if the insight we get at the, at the early stage, we can find that in most cases, people do emphasize on that they, uh, uh, why they do not trust the media organizations. They decide that most of the media organizations are biased. They are biased to the, to the political parties. Politi they are biased to the interest of, the, of their owners. So if people can understand that the content they are consuming, they are reading, then they will not be trusting. So media organization must produce accurate trust or the uh, 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 accurate content because the basic job of the media organization is to sell the trust. Their main business is with the trust, not with the information they provide. So they must be unbiased and, 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 and they must be accurate and they must be uh, and they must not produce something that uh, Dr. Barbak was telling that. If there is sensational stories, clickbait up information, people will get that social media platforms. Why will they come to the media organizations? People do come just to verify their, uh, the, their very existence, To if I, if I be precise. So they want to get the accurate truth, accurate information. So media must produce accurate information, unbiased information that is not um, no, sensational. Just to get pleasure, sensation, they'll get go to the uh, social media platforms. But for the information, the making sense of the world, making decisions, real life, uh, making uh, real life decisions of their society, of their life, they will depend on the uh, on the media organizations. So media must uh, understand this phenomena. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Aminul. So let's proceed to the question for Dr. Kabil. Uh, to capture the digital audience, is it a must for journalists in Bangladesh to practice data journalism? How can datafication win over the trust of the digital audience in the country? Uh, thank you, Dr. Jude, for the question. But uh, I want to continue where Mr. Aminul just missed that at the end of the day, print is proof. So there is a you know proverb say. So whatever we have seen, we need to verify and people should come to the mainstream media and where you can't bias and where you can't filter your content. So you have to put, you know, authentic, you know, content. So to, uh, coming to my, you know, uh, questions uh, that you have asked. So, yeah, we, we should, you know, produce uh, some, you know, some, uh, some contents that should definitely focus to the digital audience. So there is a term uh, just, you know, uh, immersed in the recent past that we call ephemeral journalism. So what is the ephemeral journalism? That the journalistic content should be snackable, should be bite-sized, and should be, you know, uh, should be consumable, uh, especially towards the digital platforms where the, co the content should be sought and, you know, bite-sized. So if we use those, you know, understanding and the concept, definitely we can produce some snackable content. For example, we can produce some data revenue storytelling for the platforms where we, basically upload the stories features where the content is very short and you know the simple and bite-sized where you can simply just 
give a title and put a photo and put some stats or you know the numbers and figures so those uh, those is an example uh, what you know the news organizations are you know practicing producing uh, from all over the world so uh, i believe that uh, if the journalist they wants to hook the young generations or digital audience they should come up with some strategical plan how to produce some data revenue storytellings and how to produce those particular platforms where you can't upload some longer form of news stories. So that's one thing. And the second is that, uh, um, yeah, um, I think, you know, the datafication means that uh, what is happening in the social, uh, we should cover them in a way that where you can produce some data. So that is understanding of the verification. So if we take what is happening right now in Bangladesh, a lot of social problems or challenges are happening. So if the journalists can capture those uh, you know, uh, um, elements and produce the content using some quantitative data, using some numbers and figures, that can really help them to bring the trustness and you know, uh, you know, uh, convince the audience. Because whenever you are writing text, you know, some sort of, you know, uh, you know um, uh, some sort of challenges uh, you can receive from the audience and they might not believe you, whatever you are writing, you can simply fabricate the data. But if you use some numerical data, facts and figures uh, through your data driven storytelling, I think you can bring the trust and, or, you know, win over these sort of challenges that our media uh, industry are facing. Okay. If I'm allowed. You have one minute. If I'm allowed, I, I yeah, one minute. So uh, though no, it's not necessary that data journalism will always produce infographics and graphs and charts, but uh, there are spaces for doing this. And we know that uh, people of this generation, they like to watch more than read. So I think that is another point that data journalism has uh, to you know, win over the generation. Yeah, less text and more visuals. So, I would like to add uh, on point here. So actually, uh, 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 media organizations, uh, must understand it is used to tell lie and statistics we have to reverse that and statistics never tell the truth media organizations must use statistic to, to tell the truth and that would be the agents of data journalism the panel datafication Datafication, digital audiences, and media trust in Bangladesh. So, thank you to the presenters, Mr. Aminul, Dr. Kabil, and Dr. Barbak. So, now I turn over the floor to Dr. Barbak to conclude the session. I am quite fashionable. I uh, I am wearing more than one hat. <laughs> uh, there's two hats uh, in this session. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that uh, session is concluded by Dr. Jude. The session on datafication, digital audiences, and media trust in Bangladesh. A research panel from the University of Liberal Arts Bangladesh, uh, Media Studies and Journalism Department, where uh, Professor Jude chaired the session and. Mahmoud Aminul Islam, uh, a lecturer from the department, uh, Dr. Abdul Kabil Khan, an assistant professor, and also myself, uh, Dr. Barbara Karma, we presented uh, some of our findings from uh, actually ongoing projects uh, on this, and hopefully we will uh, be able to finish this and uh, publish elsewhere uh, or present elsewhere the findings in general, and that will help our industry uh, to move on. So moving on, as uh, we mentioned earlier, this uh, was the last academic discussion uh, for this edition of Dhaka Media Summit. Uh, and uh, so we'll move on to the closing session of uh, Dhaka Media Summit 2022, jointly organized by Media Studies and Journalism Department and International Association for Media and Communication Research, IAMC in Bangladesh. So please allow us a couple of minutes uh, to set up for uh, the closing session. And uh, till then, I hope you uh, can bear with us. Uh, uh, let's uh, meet uh, in five minutes. Thank you. <laughs>